Hi guys and welcome to the second video in the Airflow uh, series. Uh, previously we installed Airflow and we launched it and we navigated a little bit, browse a little bit around the user interface. Uh, in this video I want to kind of uh, go a little bit more into the concepts of Airflow, to the core ideas and uh, start navigating a little bit of the code to get a better feeling on how Airflow can help us and how we can um, code directly acyclic graphs. So um, if you go to the Airflow documentation, there is this beautiful concepts page uh, where you can have a little bit of a description about all of the core ideas for Airflows. So of course, the core idea is the DAG, uh, directed acyclic graph which is a collection of all the tasks you want to run, organized in a way that reflects their relationship and relationships and dependencies. So this one that we saw before in the previous video is an example of a DAG. As you can see, it's uh, acyclic, it's directed because one, you can see the relationship from the first task to the second one, and it, it's a graph, so it's a directed acyclic graph. The second thing that we are going to uh, look at is the DAG runs. So a DAG run is a physical instance of a DAG containing instances that run for a specific execution date. So if we go to the tree view, we can see that in here we have three different DAG runs that you can read in vertically, in vertical, right? So vertically, you will have this first DAG run, then you have the second DAG run and the third DAG run. In the graph view, you can have this, um, this DAG run by single run, and here we are looking at this manually triggered DAG run. But of course, we can switch from one run to another run to another in a very quick and easy way. The third concept that I want to kind of introduce is the task. So it defines a unit of work within a DAG and it is represented as a node in the DAG graph and it's written in Python. Uh, we have different uh, kind of tasks and it is an implementation of an operator. We have a Python operator, we have bash operator, we have a lot of different kind of operators. And then we have relationship between tasks and task instances. So a task instance represents a specific run of a task and is characterized as the combination of a DAG, a task, and a point in time. So let's go back to this. As you can see, each one of these is a task. This particular one, for example, since it was executed in a specific point in time and it already ran in its success, this is a task instance. And we can actually even clear one task instance. So if I clear this, it will actually run again in a few seconds. So it will go from a state of no status and eventually, if I turn on the DAG, of course, which would be preferred, eventually this one will run. So the scheduler will pick it up and uh, will execute this run, this last task. So uh, let's go back uh, while th that one kind of picks it up. Let's go back to the uh, co core concepts and let's l talk a little bit of the task life cycle, which is very important. So a task goes through various stages from start to completion. And in the Airflow UI, these stages are displayed by a color representing each stage, which is also something we have seen a little bit before. This one is very important to kind of understand how uh, Airflow works. So you start from a no status, then the scheduler kind of picks it up eventually can schedule it, remove it, or some failure, upstream failure can happen. The schedule will pass it to an executor, which can be different kind of executors, such as the sequential executor, local executor, salary executor, or a Docker, uh, sorry, a Kubernetes executor. The executor will pass it into queue. A worker of that particular executor will pick it up and will uh, kind of run that task. Uh, eventually that task will have a different status based on how uh, it runs. So it can be a success, a failure, shutdown or up, full retry. So uh, this is like the core concepts for this video that I wanted to kind of introduce and now we're gonna 
deep dive a little bit into the code. In the meanwhile, just to kind of show, uh, this one was picked up again, uh, and it's fairly interesting to see how the the times are different, right? So here you have 1141, this one was 1154, because I cleared the status, as I said before. So uh, the scheduler, what happens that I cleared the status, then the scheduler looked that this task what had to be rescheduled, it scheduled it, the executor picked it up, it queued it, the worker eventually picked it up, the task was in the running state, then it was a success and then we are done. So the task now is in the last state, which is the success state. So let's uh, quickly code uh, a DAG. So to do that, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new Python file inside the DAGs folder. I'm gonna call this my sample DAG.py. And then we are gonna go and create our DAG. So to do this, we're gonna say DAG is equal to DAG. And in here, we first maybe import the DAG. So from airflow.models import DAG. Uh, and what you can see is that you can specify a DAG ID, which I'm going to be making equal to my sample DAG. Then I'm going to specify um, the kind of default arguments that I'm going to put equals to some arguments that I'm going to create and specify right here. So the owner is a rocket man. And uh, start date. We're gonna create, we're gonna use some functions that Airflow is providing. So from airflow.utils.dates, you see you have this days ago function, which is uh, quite useful. So I'm gonna use days ago. And days ago, I'm gonna put uh, maybe uh, yesterday. So once you have this, you can also specify a schedule interval interval and uh, right now I will specify none so we'll manually kind of trigger this. Once we have this we can kind of start creating our tasks inside the DAG. So right now we, what we did is just create a DAG into a variable specifying some arguments but we didn't add any tasks to the DAG. So in order for us to do this I'm gonna use this with DAG context manager and in here, we're going to specify the operators that are going to constitute the tasks of our DAG. So if we do run this task, it's equal to Python operator, right? Uh, and then we have task ID equal to, I don't know, run this. We're going to say a Python callable. So we're going to specify a function that is going to be called. And I'm going to create a function called this run this func. And we are also going to provide the context to this operator, ergo this task. Uh, if we go here, we're going to say, we're going to define our run this func, which is going to take the context. And it's going to basically print hi. That's, that's all it's going to do. Um, so once we have this set up, we can go to the airflow. So let me open it up. If I go here, as you can see, you have a broken DAG, which is interesting uh, because it says the Python operator is not defined. Of course, it's not defined. I didn't actually uh, import it. So from airflow dot operators dot Python operator import Python operator. We're gonna save it up. It usually takes a little bit of time to kind of uh, um, take these changes, but we can go back and see that now it's it's working, it's going. So we turn on this my sample DAG. We open it up. I already run it before. I written it before. So now if I trigger this DAG again, as you can see. Uh, we have a new path, DAG run scheduled. It's going to run in a second. Uh, actually, it already run and it worked. If I go to the view log, you can see that it actually printed high. Now let's create another operator. 
which is gonna be still a Python operator. I'm just gonna kind of copy it up. I'm gonna create run this task two, run this task two, still the same path and callable. Um, and yeah, that's it. So once I do this, if I go back to the tag itself, it's, it's gonna take a while to pick it up. Oh, here it is. So as you can see, these ones are not connected to one another. But how do we kind of specify that we want to run this first and this run this uh, second? So to do this, it's fairly easy. You can just write something like run this task and then like this, run this task too. By just using this syntax, you are saying, and it's very explicit, you're saying from the first one is run this task and then you have a direct connection to run this task too. Now, if we go back to here and we, oh, we refresh the page, as you can see, you have this connection right here. And if we trigger this tag a couple of times, we are gonna see how they're gonna run in, in not in parallel, it's all the, sorry, the first one is gonna run first and then the other one. Right now, they are both queued, which is interesting. So we are seeing a new state, queued. We refresh. Now the first two are a success. So as you can see, this DAG is running in parallel, meaning uh, two different DAG runs are uh, kind of being executed at the same time. We will also see how we can kind of uh, make uh, them run with specific parameters. So maybe run one DAG run at a time or maximum of four DAG, DAG runs at a time and so on. If we refresh the page, that's it. So it's done. So uh, this is it for this video. So what we learned is to kind of understand how we can create a first simple DAG uh, where we have two tasks made of two Python operators, Python operator first, Python operator second, calling the same function, and how to connect one another and how we can see the results in Airflow. Thanks for watching and uh, have a very nice day, guys.